The aim of this video is to establish a chain of inequalities between four important quantities. These are the harmonic mean, the geometric mean, the arithmetic mean, and the quadratic mean. And the idea is to try to establish this chain of inequalities geometrically, and then after that we're going to derive expressions for each of those means, the harmonic, quadratic, arithmetic, and geometric means. So we're going to start off with a circle with a particular center, and what we're going to do is we're going to draw in a diameter, and just for ease I'm going to draw in the horizontal diameter there. And then we're going to pick a point anywhere, I suppose I should call this um, O for the origin, and we're going to pick a point anywhere on this diameter. Um, I'm going to just choose this point, and what this is going to do is it's going to divide our diameter into two sections. One section I will color in purple, that'll be this section here, and the other section I'll color in red, that section there. And essentially what we've done, if we call this point M, this point M has divided this diameter into two parts, one of which I'm going to say has a length lowercase a, and the other one has a length lowercase b. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to try to draw in a couple of lines and triangles on this diagram to help us establish certain quantities. And those quantities, like we said, are going to be the four means that we're interested in. So the very first one I'm going to draw in, probably, probably the simplest, is a radius. And the radius which I'm going to draw is going to be one which is perpendicular to this diameter. So I'm going to try to color code all of these. Here I've got a radius going up like that. Like we said, it's at right angles. So let me draw in a right angle there. And this I'm going to call capital A. That's going to be capital A there. Now from this point M here, I'm going to do a similar thing. I'm going to draw a perpendicular line which goes from M to the edge of the circle. I'm going to do this one in green, like this. Once again, this is perpendicular, and I'm going to call this one G. I suppose I should extend this to make sure it goes all the way. Okay, now I'm going to draw, um, I suppose I should also label um, these points, so I'm going to call this one P, I'll call this one CN. Um, I'm going to draw in NM, the line NM, like this, and I'm going to call that one Q. And then I'm going to draw in OP, but I'm actually not interested in what OP is. But I'm drawing OP because this line OP, I'm going to I'm going to actually pull out part of it, not all of it, just part of it. And to work out what that part is, I need to construct a line which is perpendicular to OP, but passes through M. So it should look something like this. This is perpendicular. And I'm going to call this point here let's say S, and I'm interested in the length SP, so I'm going to color that in pink, SP is that length there, and I'm going to call that length H. And so each of these lengths that I've colored and labeled A, G, Q, and H, these are going to represent the arithmetic mean, the geometric mean, the quadratic mean, and the harmonic mean. Okay. Now let's really quickly establish the inequality chain that we've got here. Now it's pretty obvious that we've got a lot of right angled triangles going on. Um, so for example, if we have a look in triangle OMN, so this triangle here, we can see that Q, the orange length, is the hypotenuse, so it certainly has to be larger than any other length within that triangle. So I can say that Q has to be greater than or equal to A. You might be wondering, when would it ever be equal to A? Well, if you imagine that this point M was actually placed exactly on the origin, then the length Q would be exactly the same as the length A. Okay, so that triangle sort of degenerates into a, tri into a straight line, and the hypotenuse kind of sits on top of the other side length. But anyway, we can see that Q is clearly uh, larger than A, and we get that equality case when M is lying on O. Okay, what else can we see? Well, this length A is quite clearly longer than this length G. But once again, if M was brought over to O, then G could be equal to A. Because what's G? G is just a perpendicular line drawn to the diameter that goes from M 
to the um, to the edge of the circle. And that's exactly what this line is here if M was at the center. So we can see that A is going to be greater than or equal to G. Whoops, G. And then finally, what do we have in this triangle? PSM. In triangle PSM, G is the hypotenuse, and so it's larger than any other side in the triangle. So G is clearly greater than H. So again, I can say that G is greater than or equal to H, and we would get equality um, if, if that degenerates into a straight line as well. Okay. All right. So we've got this chain of inequalities here, um, which is that the quadratic mean is larger than or equal to the arithmetic mean, which is larger than or equal to the geometric mean, which is larger than or equal to the harmonic mean. All really nice and purely derived from very, very simple trigonometry um, and just geometry in general. Okay. Now, what we would like to do after this is to establish some uh, expressions for the quadratic mean, the arithmetic mean, the geometric mean, and the harmonic mean in terms of these lowercase a and b, these lengths here, which is the um, which is the the way that the diameter has been divided into two pieces. Okay, so I think probably the easiest one to start off with is the arithmetic mean. So let's go ahead and do that one. So the arithmetic mean is given by that blue line, and we've labeled it a, and it's quite obviously a radius. So this one I think is pretty simple. The arithmetic mean A is going to simply be equal to a radius length and that's going to be half of a diameter and the diameter is A plus B. So this will be A plus B on two. Okay, and so we recover our arithmetic mean which is the normal mean, the normal average that you encounter in junior years uh, at school. Okay, A plus B on two. Okay, so that one covers the arithmetic mean. All right, what should we do next? Let's go for the quadratic mean because that's in a triangle that involves the arithmetic mean, which we've already worked out. Now, it's a right angle triangle, so I'm looking for the hypotenuse, which means I can just use Pythagoras. Um, but in order to do that, I need to work out this other length, OM. So just on the side here, um, I'm going to, I suppose, write on the side that OM is equal to, uh, let's see, what's OM equal to? Well, OM, we can obtain OM by grabbing a full radius and then subtracting off this section in red here, which is B. So it's simply A plus B on two minus B, and then that simplifies to A minus B on two, which is quite a nice length. So um, maybe I'll put it in here. This is A minus B on two. So now if I want to work out my quadratic mean, I'll do this in orange, try to keep everything color coded. The quadratic mean is going to be Q squared equal to A plus B on two squared plus A minus B on two squared. Simply Pythagoras. Okay, if we expand everything out, this will be a quarter into a squared plus 2ab plus b squared and this will be a quarter into a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. If we simplify everything, um, let's see, the 2ab and the minus 2ab cancel and then I have two lots of a squared plus b squared so I end up with a squared plus b squared on 2. So that's what q squared is equal to but I'm interested in just q. So Q is going to be equal to the square root of this. And because Q here, the quadratic mean represents a length, I'm only interested in the positive square root. So the square root of A squared plus B squared on two is what I get for my quadratic mean. Okay, so that takes care of the quadratic mean. Now, let's go for the next one, which is G, the geometric mean. Okay, once again, this lies inside a right angle triangle. Uh, I know what OM is, I know what this is, this is a radius, so it's actually really the arithmetic mean, A plus B on 2, and so I can get G. So, similar sort of thing, the geometric mean, 
Okay, so here we've got g squared would be equal to the hypotenuse, which was a plus b on 2 squared, minus the other side, which was a minus b on 2 squared. And here, instead of expanding and simplifying, we could probably make use of a difference of squares factorization. And we end up with a plus b on 2 minus a minus b on 2. Actually, I'm going to use a plus first. And then times a plus b on 2. Now we'll use the minus a minus b on 2. That first bracket there is simply an a, and the second bracket is simply a b. And so g is going to be, once again, the positive square root, because I'm only interested in the length, because g is a length. So this is the positive square root of a b, which gives me g. Okay, so we have an expression for our geometric mean. Okay, and then finally, what do we need? We now need to work out an expression for the uh, harmonic mean, h. Now, this is also within a right angled triangle here, uh, but we don't have the length of sm. Okay, that's not a length that we have. We could work it out, but it might take a bit of effort to do so. So instead of doing that, hopefully you can see that triangle SPM and triangle OPM are similar. Okay, these are similar triangles. And so what we can do is we can use the fact that in similar triangles, corresponding sides are in the same ratio or in the same proportion. So what I'm going to do in order to do the harmonic mean, I'm just going to go down to the next page, the harmonic mean, I'm just going to quickly draw up those two triangles so that we can see them very explicitly. Um, just very rough. So this triangle here was O, M, P. The hypotenuse was A, which was the arithmetic mean, and then uh, we had the geometric mean there. And then the other triangle, which is here, um, let's see, we've got M, S, P. So if I draw this one in the same sort of orientation as I've drawn O, M, P, it should be the following should be M, S, P, okay? And I wanted to try to match up my right angles and match up the common angle P here so that they're oriented the same way. Now, M, P, that hypotenuse was G, and P, S was the length we're interested in, which is the harmonic mean. And so now I'm going to say, well, triangle O, M, P is similar to triangle M, S, H, whoops, not H, MSP. And so therefore, I've got that A on G is equal to G on H. Of course, the reasoning is that corresponding sides in similar triangles are in proportion, but I'm not going to bother writing that out. So H is equal to G squared on A. Okay, what's G? G was root AB, so G squared is just AB. And A is the arithmetic mean, so that's A plus B on 2. I can just multiply top and bottom by 2, and I get 2AB over A plus B equals H. Okay, so that's one way that we can write this. Um, and that's, I mean, this is totally fine. Another way that we sometimes see the harmonic mean written is if we actually reciprocate both sides. So we get 1 on H equals a plus b over 2ab. I'm going to multiply across by 2, or rather I'm going to factor out um, a 2 in the denominator to have a half. And then we'll see this sometimes written as um, 1 on a plus 1 on b. So 1 on h equals a half, 1 on a plus 1 on b. Now I know this half here um, is not something that we can just ignore. But if you were to ignore it, so if we just cross this out for a moment, um, this might look like something you see in physics, where if you have two resistors in parallel, the equivalent resistance is calculated. If this was the equivalent resistance, the reciprocal of the equivalent resistance is equal to the sum of the reciprocal um, resistances that you have in parallel. So this is a pretty interesting way that something like the harmonic mean is actually related to something in real life, something very physical and applied.
Okay, but of course, this, um, this half isn't something that we can just ignore. And so that does still exist there. Okay, so we've established those expressions for our four different types of means. So now we might just write um, in one, all of or, or this inequality chain with those expressions. So we have 2ab on a plus b is less than or equal to the geometric mean, which is root ab, and that's less than or equal to the arithmetic mean, and that's less than or equal to the quadratic mean, a squared plus b squared on 2, and the square root of that. Okay, And whenever we have inequalities, it's often quite interesting and informative to try to understand when the equality holds. And what I mean by that is you can see that in each of these inequalities, it's less than or equal to. So we're interested in the case, well, when is it equal to? When do we have equality? And here, in fact, in all of these, in each of these, um, in each of these here, we have equality when A is equal to B. Now let's see if that makes sense in our diagram. If we go back up to the diagram, we said that we would have equality when the point M corresponded with O. And if M corresponds with O, that means our point M is dividing our diameter exactly in half. And so the purple part would only be here, and that would be A. The red part would be there, and that would be B. And so we would have A is a radius and B is a radius. And obviously the radii have to be equal which is what we're saying, A is equal to B, okay? So this is, a, this is our inequality chain here. Four pretty important inequalities. These inequalities actually generalize beyond two variables here. So we've only used the variables A and B, but actually they generalize to N variables. Um, and they are part of a class of, of inequalities or a class of uh, means, I suppose, these four means. They're part of a class of means which are quite interesting and perhaps we'll see in a later video how they're related to each other.